So let's start with the first design flaw, the first assumption that all employees are created equal. I'm going to warn you, this is one of those random participation moments coming up, so get yourself ready. Are all employees created equal? Who says yes? Wicked smart group. I knew I loved this group. They always get those answers right. Of course not. How are employees different? Attitude. Attitude, for sure. What else? Capability, skills. What else? What's that? Motivation. Motivation. How else? Experience, performance, work ethic. Personality, for sure. Values. So do we differentiate employees based on that difference in value from an HR process perspective? How do we differentiate? Because we do. Pay. That's an obvious one for sure. We don't pay everybody the same. That's obvious. What else? Think about the, the hiring process. I mean, we, we draw a pretty strict line about who we'll even allow into our company, right? So, so are we all on board that clearly employees are, are not equal? So let's take the two ends of the spectrum here. And I want to see if maybe you've had the same experience I have. Over there on the left is what we're going to call Deb. Deb the driver. Deb is one of these people that just gets it done. She's, the people, she's one of those people making it happen. She always exceeds her results. You raise the bar, she goes and gets it. Doesn't matter what gets in her way, doesn't matter what happens, she makes it happen. You need somebody to step up and volunteer to take on a tough project, Deb's the person that does it. Deb doesn't create any drama. She helps other people get better. I mean, she's the kind of people that helps your business drive forward. You have people like that in your company, I hope? You have those people, can you see like a couple people in your mind who they are? Has everybody got those? Okay, now the next one's actually easier. So on the other end is Vicky the victim. <laughs> right? Vicky is our drama queen. Right? When she, when she achieves once in a while our minimum expectations, she acts as if she just cured cancer. <laughs> she wants to be recognized for her below average work. Right? She's the one that we see often, employee relations people. Because she has constant problems with how her manager and her coworkers are treating her. She's always being treated unfairly. Right? She spends half her days on salary.com justifying to you that she's underpaid. Right? So do you know this person? Okay, so the, the reality of the intervention, and we're going to talk about this later perhaps, is that Vicky probably shouldn't be working for our companies anymore, right? We haven't gotten around to firing her yet, but she shouldn't be there. But if we know who Vicky is, you have that person in your mind, you probably have a whole list. So let me, ask the, let me ask the important question. If you needed to solicit an opinion or input about how to improve the company, who would you ask of these two people? Deb, why? She's a go-getter. If she gives you an input and her opinion, what's she likely to talk about? Yeah, like things that would actually link to results, right? She's going to tell you ways to improve the company. If you ask Vicky, what's Vicky going to tell you about? Right, ways to make her more comfortable. So it's fairly clear, what I'm hearing from you is that when you ask opinions about running the company from these two groups of people, that you don't treat their opinions as equally credible. Is that fair to say? So let me ask the question then, the next question, when we think about surveying, how do you differentiate in your engagement survey between these two groups of people? When you get back your survey results, I don't know about you, but the way that we always did it is we cast out a survey to everybody in the company, everybody filled it out, everybody got one vote, we rolled it up, we did analysis, and then we went and invested a ton of time and effort and energy in trying to fix whatever we heard. Is that comparable to sort of what you do, something like that? How do you know that you're not working on Vicky's problems instead of Deb's? So here's your first reality check. <laughs> All employees are not created equal. Treating those opinions as the same is crazy. It's crazy. 
And today, I would guarantee you that almost every one of you that's doing an employee survey can't tell me where those action plans that you're going out and investing money and time in, where they're coming from, which group they're coming from. 